Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Captain Carrot and the Amazing Zoo Crew. Welcome in to Bros, Foes, and Heroes. This is episode seven. I am your host, Zach, joined by the Kitty Pride to my Colossus, <laughs> Mr. Mike. How are you doing, Mike? Fantastic, Zach. I know that we've got another uh, wonderful episode in store for everyone who listens. We do. And I teased it a little bit last episode just by yeah. saying we were in the Animal Kingdom. Yeah. And that is because our heroes, plural, today mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because there's not just one of them mike so in the in the vein of the avengers or yes. the justice it, league it's a superhero team did Zack snyder have anything to do with this not yet okay good um wait till well i'll save that for yeah. you um we are talking about captain carrot and his amazing zoo crew <laughs> now this was a comic captain created Karen. back in 1982 or actually that's when it was first published the issue one right. technically it wasn't even issue one uh, do you remember back in the day, and we'll take a moment to talk to the kids here hey, kids. Who, are, who are comic book fans. Hang on. Let me turn my chair around and sit in it backwards. Oh, yeah. Turn my hat I guess to the let back. Me, yeah. Well, I was going to do the so one where can, like the hat was like slanted to the yeah, side. So we can wrap. Seem cooler. Yeah. Sure. Let us wrap with you, kids. Uh, back in the day, when you would buy comics, it wasn't unusual for publication companies to promote upcoming titles mm-hmm. by having like previews. At the end of other stories. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would pick yeah, up, you know, you'd pick up Iron Man and maybe at the end DC was pitching something new with, I don't know, the Green Goblin. So they give you like a. Right. That's right. how this started. Um, its first appearance in 1982 was actually in Teen Titans number 16. Okay. And it was a 16 page kind of preview. 16 page preview. That's which is a large wow, preview. that is a lot. Because yeah. usually it was like eight Maybe at the most is uh-huh. a big one. Sometimes you get four. Right. It all just kind of depends. And it was more of just to kind of sell people on what's coming up. Well, this 16-page preview basically gives us the origin of Captain Carrot and the Zoo Crew. Gotcha. It goes on more from there. But was, was it a lab? No. Were they were they in a in a in a like a pound? No. A, a medical testing no, facility? they're not. Their powers, I would say, are completely... Uh, there is a DC hero that is completely responsible for giving them all their powers. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, nice. I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, originally, it was a 20-issue run that ran from 1982 to 20 1983. Issues. Wow. Yes. After this, this, I guess, if you look it up, is kind of considered issue zero. Even yeah. though it was part of Teen Titans, but there's 20 after that. Um, and then later on... They canceled the series before it was done, Mm -hmm. and they have a series later on that they released that was, you know, they did double issues, three double issues to kind of make up what they had already done that hadn't Right, to get rid of the rest of the stuff, yeah. Um, This comic is created, and I I guess the best way to do it before we hop in Mm -hmm. um, is that these are all basically their cartoon animals in this world. What, what are we dealing with here? Is this DC, Marvel? It is DC. It is DC. Okay. Well, then it makes total sense. It is DC. And all sure. of this is, like, they're supposed to look like uh, Saturday morning cartoon strips yeah. in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, are in this world, but they're also superheroes. Right, I guess. So, uh, when I would look everywhere, the phrase that I kept coming across was, Funny animal properties. Mm. So apparently this was DC's last funny animal property back in 82, but there were other ones. I just didn't realize that funny animal properties was something that comic book uh, publication companies held dear. I, I think that I think that maybe this is a play for a much younger crowd than they were getting. This could be. There's this a is, lot of... This there, is the camel cigarettes of DC Comics. Exactly. There's a lot of parody and stuff in here as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, So obviously I know that a lot of this is meant to be taking tongue in cheek and I realize what they were doing, but still some of this, it's just, it's too great not to share. So when when you look at this though, you don't get the same feeling you do when you see um, what's his name in, in guardians of the galaxy. 
group? Ro- oh, uh, rocket. Rock, yeah, rocket, rocket. You don't get the same feeling. I don't here. know how we were talking about animals, and the first one I said was a tree. Yeah, we've been well, talking about the know. zoo crew. Yeah, 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 but that's uh, here and That's true. Rocket but is more. Rocket's mean. Yeah, he's a mean dude. Yeah, I mean, but you buy into it pretty quickly. Yes, that this is a thing. Yeah, these it, they're too they're too Saturday morning. Exactly. Looking. Yeah, but let me go ahead and and give credit where credit is due because this sure. was created by Roy Thomas and Scott Shaw. Now, Scott Shaw's name is often spelled Scott Shaw exclamation point at the end of the Shaw (laughs) or Scott Shaw with the question mark at the end of the Shaw. I didn't know you could do that. I had no idea why. And then going back and looking, I realized it's how he signs his art. Oh, okay. And stuff that he does. So, yeah. So, it's either Scott (laughs) Shaw, Scott Shaw exclamation point or Scott Shaw question mark. Uh, okay. Well, good um, round, man. now Scott Shaw worked on a lot. He's worked on a lot of like TV animation. Uh-huh. He's also done. I wrote down their uh, movies that he's worked on as well. Yeah. I read through them all. For some reason, the only one I can remember right now is Mulan, the second Mulan. But he's done bigger and better things than that. Right. Um, TV wise. And then comics wise, he did a lot of like the uh, Hanna-Barbera cartoon comic crossovers that they would have. Okay. Do. Okay. And he's also done comics for The Simpsons. And Sonic the Hedgehog and I've, Archie. I've never understood those comics, but okay. Okay. It just seems like a play on something that's already popular yeah. and you go, hey, how about a comic? That's easy. So, but so he, he's at least a very talented, he can change different animation styles. We'll right. give Scott the credit. Gotcha, there. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Roy Thomas. He did now, do Archie, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Now, Roy, well, it's not like the original Archie. I don't think oh. it's like newfangled Archie. Oh, screw that. <laughs> Roy Thomas, on the other hand, is a heavyweight. Yeah, I'm looking at this um, list you've got here. He's Stan Lee's first successor as editor in chief of Marvel Comics. Yeah, that's something. And also, uh, he has co created. Let me just run through this list of characters he's co created, Mike. Yeah. Wolverine, Vision, Doc Samson, Carol Danvers, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Ultron, Yellow Jacket, Defenders, Man Thing, Red <laughs> Sonya, Adam Warlock. Morbius, who's that vampire that right. from yeah, yeah, uh, Ghost Rider, the one they made the horrible movie, Squadron, nobody's seen Squadron yet. Supreme. Have they released it yet? No, 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 that's what it, I'm saying. Nobody's seen it yet. Nighthawk, and then I made sure to put not our Nighthawk. Oh, gotcha. This is an N, not a K. Yeah, and then uh, Havoc, Banshee, Valkyrie, and a lot of others. Wow. So I just, I mean, this guy. You know, honestly, I mean, if you just took three or four out of there, yes. you would say the guy was super accomplished. I mean, freaking Wolverine. Oh, you exactly. Know? So Doc Samson. Yes, I know a little bit about Doc Samson. Is that the big buff dude that I think has so. blonde hair and stuff? Is that the guy they made the movie of? Yeah. The Doc Samson movie? Have you ever seen that one? Uh, I have it, funny enough. Weird green things start coming out of the emeralds. and I haven't seen it. Bite I, them like snakes. I do stuff. have it, though. I went to see that at a drive-in when I was a kid. Really? When it actually came out. Don't tell people when that came out. Oh, I'm looking it up when it came out, actually. Yeah, I bet it's, I bet it's 77 78? Uh, well, actually, hold on. Maybe that's a different... Doc Sampson was in... It's pulling up uh, Marvel in the uh, Incredible Hulk. Okay. So maybe, maybe that's, that's a different, different Doc Sampson. Maybe it's Doc, Ty, oh, it's Doc Savage, I think. Yes, you are thinking of yeah, Doc Savage. Doc Savage. No, Doc Sampson is played by Ty Burrell in the Incredible Hulk movie. Doc Savage was, was yes. basically... It was like... Um, uh, Indiana Jones, but buff and yes, here's it, it was a, the movie was a lot like the Flash Gordon movie and stuff like that. You know, I have the uh, movie at home. I just haven't watched oh, it. Yet. Really? I have it on DVD. Yeah, you should watch it. My uncle gave it to me, kind of for the same reason. What year? There was one in 1975. Hey, there you go. Uh, it was played by. I'm trying to see who the actor Shit. was. Was it uh, Ron Eli? Probably. Yeah, Ron Eli as Clark Savage, a.k.a. Doc. Doc Savage. All right, we've gone way off the rails here. Okay, and proved so that my parents took me to see these movies when I was six. <laughs> so there we go. So let's get into the origin of uh, Captain Carrot and his zoo crew. Yeah. So basically, in this 16-page preview, mm-hmm. uh, we are on our Earth, regular Earth. Okay. Clark Kent works not as a newspaper reporter, but as a TV anchor. Okay. Because okay. we're in the early 80s. Sure. And since Sexier. We're t- yeah. Sure. And while we're talking about Superman now, I'm just going to throw out something that I hated about reading this whole thing. Zack Snyder sucks. This is definitely <laughs> in the realm. In the So, 
in the 80s is when Batman started to outsell Superman. Right. Batman became DC's biggest, biggest thing property. right sure. there in the 80s. Sure. And they were trying to do things with Superman all throughout kind of the yeah, 80s to yeah. get interest back in him. But this falls into the I can do everything type Superman. Like right. I have an answer to everything. Right. And it's just right. super annoying in a way. Yeah. But he, Clark Kent, is a TV anchor. And there's been different sightings all over, I guess, Metropolis or the world where they're at of people starting to act like monkeys. <laughs> we they're acting like they're Wait, what? yeah they're acting like monkeys okay. uh they're being basically acting like primates okay superman thinks that all right i'm gonna go out and see what's I'm up with this because superman thing. superman yeah. can figure it out sure and as he's flying around he notices a ray from out in space come and strike a man hey look at that ray yeah and it comes and strikes <laughs> a man and the man immediately starts acting like a monkey <laughs> okay so he decides I'm going to go out. And see <laughs> he where immediately this... starts acting like a monkey. Well, yeah, what he's a just dumb like, phrase. and he almost gets hit by a, a truck and stuff uh -huh. uh, as monkeys do. Exactly. Sure. I made sure to put in here um, that this is a oversimplified <laughs> and just like, cause there's a lot going on. So I'm trying to explain this as simple as possible. Yeah. Uh, so he tries to fly out of earth to see where the ray is coming from. Okay. He can't break through Earth's atmosphere for some reason. It doesn't say why. It, there's something blocking him. But there's a meteor coming through. It's Thursday. Yeah. There's a meteor coming through that's about to hit Earth. Okay. So Superman thinks, if that can break through, I can use that to break through the other way. Okay. I can grab the meteor and, like, shoot back out this the is, other way with it. This impeccable thinking. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. Now, it works. Oh, okay. But whatever well, force him. was holding him back, when it does, it breaks up the meteor into multiple pieces, and yeah. it kind of scatters, and it looks sure. like it falls back down to Earth. Oh. And this whole thing has left Superman kind of just woozy and out of it, and he decides, hey, I need to fly back down to Earth yeah. just to regain myself before. Just take a nap or something. Yep. Sure. He flies into what he think is the uh, TV station that he worked at. Uh-huh. And he changes back to his clothes and he goes to sit down in a chair and he's not paying attention. And he sits down on a rabbit who is named <laughs> Roger Rodney Rabbit. He's not paying attention. And so he sits down on a rabbit. Yeah. Well, or, he's, Roger. or he sits in the chair right as the rabbit's about to. Yeah. And he's like, hey, this is my chair. And then Clark, because he's fully dressed up as a. Uh, Clark can't until he realizes that the entire world is all animals and there's no reason for him to protect his identity. So then he's Superman throughout the whole entire thing. But we are introduced to Freaking Roger. Superman, man. You I, know, dude. Superman, get out of here. So we With are red underwear. introduced to Roger Rodney Rabbit. And a little bit about this because you would think, hmm, Roger Rabbit, uh -huh. just like I did. Yeah. So I went and I looked. Um, Gary K. Wolf's book, Who Censored Roger Rabbit, came out in 1981, in June of 1981. So that's the book that Roger Rabbit that was based on? That is the book that they used to make the movie. It's odd to me that that was a book. Who filmed Roger Rabbit. You know, it's a lot different, too, right? Oh, is it really? Yeah. The the ending and everything's different, too. The like guy, guy doesn't turn into a cartoon no, freak? And no, that's not at all. It involves, it involves a genie. Ooh. And Roger, like cartoons are able to create like duplicates of themselves oh. that only last a certain amount of time. Yeah. And then they like disintegrate. They use them as stunt doubles kind of. Uh -huh. And actually like Roger dies in the book. Oh, wow. And it's his duplicate that's helping Valiant try to figure out who. Oh, cool. It, it is a little bit different. Yeah, I might but actually I, read that. No. I did the uh, research to see that that came out eight months before the comics release. Okay. I guess that maybe they just had the I idea and they were working on it and it was just one of those. I would think yeah. so. But because of this and to avoid confusion later on, he is usually referred to as Rodney. Gotcha. So I guess they saw it. They liked the alliteration and then yeah, yeah. maybe after. Then they went, oh, shit. Well, at the also at the same time, though, you have to think it's just the book at that point. Like, I don't think Who Framed Roger Rabbit became a bigger part of the American zeitgeist. Yeah. Until after that movie. Right. So right, 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 right. maybe it's just some weird huh. uh, thing there. When did Roger Rabbit the movie come out? 88. 
Oh, okay. So this is seven years. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's just a book. And it could just be, like, I don't think there was any, obviously. Right, right, right. No intention. Yeah, but so I just found that very uh, weird and interesting. But Rodney works as a... hang, Hang on one second. So Roger Rodney Rabbit is the alias of Captain Carrot as... Um, uh, Clark Kent is to Superman. Yes, exactly. Okay, all right. That's exactly the way it is, even though he's not Captain Carrot yet. Gotcha. Right now, he's just, he's a comic book uh, artist and writer, and his comic (laughs) is just a lot of animals. Sure. Which is, they just call it JLA, which is a parody of Justice League America. Yeah. Boy, DC, you're doing great stuff. Um, Later on, we find out that there is, like, a Justice League group that's real on, like, a separate planet and yes again some of it's i'm not getting into that stuff we're just talking about the characters this is this is why like i tried to explain to my wife the other day about these multiple timelines and things you know the these comic books or the comic book companies dc and marvel both dc Mm -hmm. mainly but they would splinter all of their characters everywhere and then at some point they had to go okay we got to rein it back in yep now these multiple timelines exist. How do we get rid of those? And so that's why usually on this, I'll find like an era or a series to do. And like one day I was talking to my wife about this uh, because we are going to do my wife. My wife uh, <laughs> we are talking to. I, I don't know why I said we were talking to. Like we're interviewing, we were talking about. We were talking to some comics. Um That we're going to do like Batman and Superman and stuff like that. But the way I'm going to approach it, because obviously if we sat down and did one, it would take us forever. Oh, yeah. I'm going to focus on specific arcs of where it's just crazy. Yeah, I like that. So like we'll have a Batman episode coming up soon and I'm focusing on all star Batman because that's Frank Miller for 10 issues. Right. And it's just stupid. The stuff that Batman does. Batman addicted to crack. Exactly. That kind of thing. That's sure. the stuff we're going to focus yeah. on. Cause everybody knows crack man. <laughs> exactly. Well, I don't, haven't come across that yet, but it's probably a DC character. Crack man. Um, getting back to he got a lot Captain of stuff done. here. I got to say that about crack man. He oh, would get a sure. lot of things done for sure. Yeah. But they weren't done well, if, but he did a lot. But then the criminals just waited till he was strung out. And then sure. that's when they would rob banks. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, Rodney reaches out while he's talking to Clark. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll just say Superman because again, he switches out of his Clark can't get up because none of he's these animals screw are this gonna and puts yeah. the Superman thing back on. Okay. Um, Rodney yeah. reaches out to grab a carrot to eat, and we notice the carrot is glowing, <laughs> but he doesn't. It's a cosmic carrot. Sure, he eats the cosmic carrot, and that is how he gains his powers. Right, and we find out that basically. You remember that meteor that Superman used to yeah, break back in? Yeah. When it broke up, it went and landed so it's in all different Superman's places. Fault. It is. This is all Superman's fault. Yeah. It affected the carrots that cre- make uh, Rodney Captain Carrot. Right. And also these meteor pieces have landed other places mm-hmm. and have affected other animals. Other animals this, are eating these things or, or getting hit by them yes, or whatever. And are gaining sure. powers. Right. So let's go ahead. But no explanation as to why we're in a world full of animals. No, we're just yeah. basically uh, like DC has and Marvel has multiple Earths. Yeah. This is Earth C. Oh, okay. Sure. Earth C. Yep. Yeah. As it's called in the DC universe. There's also an Earth C minus and stuff. Oh. Because if we can make it any more convoluted, sometimes we like to. Yeah. Is the motto in comic books. That's um, fantastic. But just for the sake of this, it's it is we have found out that Superman is on a different Earth. Um, yeah, the, if he would have just left things alone. He eventually, like after a three series or a three issue run, he leaves and goes back to regular. Earth. Superman but just goes screw that. He's like, I fixed what I came to do. Basically, they find and now out, he can get out of the atmosphere. Yeah, ah, and okay. he can get back. Well, the ray, like I'll just sum up that one that was shooting yeah. people. It was affecting people in uh, Earth C the same way, except. When it would strike the animals, since they act like humans already, yeah, it kind of reverts them back into how they would act as actual animals. Oh, so uh, turns out it was the giant starfish on Pluto named Starro that was sending out <laughs> a de evolutionary ray. This is the dumbest thing. This is this is the all time dumbest thing so far. <sighs> I mean, I can get with Dog Welder. You know, because it's just outrageous or whatever. But this this type of story 
is one where DC goes, hey, let's do this kooky thing, right? That's and then, what it is. And then we don't have to explain this or that, and we'll just, hey, everybody will love it. No, nobody loves Here's it. Here's a lot of animals. It's supposed to be funny. It's one of our funny animal properties. Funny animal properties. <laughs> so let me go ahead, now that you know about how the zoo crew came yeah. about, uh, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of their powers and tell you about the rest of the zoo crew because we focus right. on Roger Rodney Great. Rabbit. Those carrots that he eats, it gives him basically super strength. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it increases his endurance. He can hear better. Hey, by the way, we're brought to you by Testacuzzi. That's right. Talking about endurance. <laughs> Does it have... <laughs> Never I mind. Know. So, I don't know. I don't know. and he also has, uh, he can't fly, but he can bunny hop really far. Sure. He has a super well, powerful that makes sense. Lead. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me tell you about the rest of the zoo crew, though, Mike. When I say it makes sense, it makes zero it sense. It makes zero yeah. sense. And I'm going to give you, first we have Miss Felina Fur. Okay. Better known as Ali Cat Abra. A-L-L-E-Y dash K-A-T dash A-B-R-A. Ali Cat Abra is her hero name. She is a cat from Mew Orleans because every place in here <laughs> Mew Orleans. is an animal pun. Okay, so this is the other thing I think of when I see this kind of stuff. There was a meeting, if not a series of meetings, to come up with all of this. They went hardcore yeah. on all of this. New York is GNU Nork, or <laughs> York. Um, their president is Mallard Fillmore. Um, I'm trying to remember other places. There's, oh, uh, Tallahassee is like Tallahatchie. Mm. It's all bad. So I guess, but you know, honestly, I mean, if you're going to go this hard on it, just go all the way. I guess. Uh, Ali Cat Abra, she's a martial arts instructor. Oh, yeah. She's also a student of mystical arts. Is she the one with the, with the big fro? Uh, she is, no, she is the one right next to Captain Carrot. Oh, okay. She has oh, the wand with the hood. and the mask yeah. and purple. Yeah, she has a hood on. Yeah, basically. so yeah. that is, Cowl. and she uses her magic wand for powers. Okay. Uh, we have the purple magic one there. Wanda. Wanda, yes. <laughs> we have Peter Porkchop, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Pig Iron. Yeah. Now, he is a pig from Pigsburg. Sure. And he was hit by one of those meteor pieces. Uh, Alley Catabra, basically everybody gets their powers from these meteor pieces but the meteor hits pig iron and he, along with the meteor he falls into like molten metal and so it like transforms his body into like so a he, living steel he becomes pig iron yeah, yeah I get pig it. Iron. Sure. so he has yeah. like a bunch of strength and invulnerability pig iron, isn't pig iron like the 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 original version of iron before it's like uh, whatever they do to it to make it regular iron sure i think it is i think you're right but yeah I couldn't remember that one doing that. So there you go. Now you learn something more you know. The hey, uh, sorry. Aaron here. Hey. I've been looking through the DC database yeah. at this stuff, and Starro is fucking horrifying. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the, the star, star Pluto, creature. Dude. It's, the, a, it's an intergalactic mind controlling starfish, and on the wiki, it's attached itself to a little girl's face. <laughs> and it's like holding one out at you. Like, oh, that's even I, better. I didn't like, come across yeah, that that's one. That's even better. It's sick as fuck. <laughs> okay, producer out. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. The consequent chemical reaction transformed his now enormous body into living steel with strength and invulnerability to match. Wonderful. Exactly. And his name is Peter Porkchops. Peter Porkchops, which is apparently like a throwback from a 1940s comic, too. To, to me, this is almost like, so the words Peter Porkchops, it's like one of the things I hate in the world is those signs for like places that sell sausage or meat houses or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. butchers, I guess is what a meat house is. Um, Usually. Yeah. And it's like the pig cutting himself and he's so happy about it or whatever, or, or the pigs nuzzling together and, I have and never they go, seen love our sausage or whatever. They're always, the animals are always so happy that are being killed to make the thing you're eating. Well, yeah, that's why we can eat those things. You, but what all I'm, animals, I was taught at a young age that all animals are happy to die for our food. Oh, okay. Uh, and then it says, <laughs> uh, what I'm comparing that to is the fact that his name is Peter and pork chops. Why does he know what pork chops are? That is a really great point. If, they, if they've always been well, these animals, these sentient animals, somebody had to cut up one and eat it to create the pork chop. Well, and here's the thing, too, is that's his last name. So he's from the, the his whole family is named right, after his him. lineage is pork chops. Exactly. I come from a long line of pork chops. Maybe they're just like, hey, after we're done fighting crime, we'll just go up to that farm and become pork chops for people. <laughs> 
But what people? It's all talking animals. That is true. There are no... Well, there is like... Humans later, they just think they're like maybe weird the, creatures, kind of like aliens. Maybe the wolves eat them or something. That would make sense. You know, I don't know. I, I, I think we're putting far too much thought into probably. That. They didn't put as much into this. So My we favorite is either. the next one. My favorite yeah. is the next one because so, it makes no sense. Not only did we do puns for where people were, uh-huh. but let me introduce you to bird rentals. Okay, so this is obviously Bert Reynolds. Yes, but we changed it to rentals. Bert rentals. No hey. bird. Oh, I did. Rentals. You said Bert. Yeah, no, no. Thank so, Bert Reynolds, Bird, Bird Rentals. Rentals. Why change the R- Reynolds part? Maybe they just wanted it. Oh, we don't want to get sued. Yeah, we don't want to get sued. Change For it to, using the word rentals. Change it to rentals. rentals. Yeah. That's uh, dumb. His alias is Rubber Duck because, sure. well, he's just an elastic duck. That's Bring I mean, he, back, Rubber Duck. He stretches his body into any shape. Uh, he is from Follywood, <laughs> California. I didn't catch the Fernia the first time. Fernia. Yeah. Both him and the next one are from there. Yeah. This uh, sucks. I, I he, suck. he was, <laughs> he's given his power, like I said, to stretch his body into any shape and length when a meteor fragment yeah. struck his hot tub. Where did he Sure. Yeah. So he's out there chilling in his hot tub. Meteor strikes it. Now he can just As basically stretch. Are apt to do. Another person that was out there with him was Miss Rova Barkett. Oh, no. Also known as. She's the one with the big fro. My Yes. Also, my favorite of the Zoo Crew names, Yankee Poodle. Yankee Poodle. Um, also from Follywood. So she was a gossip columnist who was interviewing bird rentals while this happened. What's, what's the folly part of Follywood? I don't know. That's not an animal. Maybe just because, like, oh, it's kooky. Oh, okay. You know, like, follies? I guess. It's not a word we necessarily use a lot now, but yeah. it's kooky. Um, basically, she's a gossip columnist, though. Uh-huh. Uh, the powers that she was given is she is able to project a repelling force okay. in the form of blue stars with one hand and attraction force with the other <laughs> hand in the form of red and white stars. So she shoots people with a flag. She can push people away yeah. or draw people to her based on the colors of stars and what hand she right, uses. Right, 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 right. Oh, the, the part I think we're missing here is that she was interviewing Bird yeah, no. at the time. And that's so that how means she got, they were both in the hot tub, probably. Or she was sitting by the hot tub. Yeah. Something was about to go down, and then they got hit by these wacky meteors. And then they got powers. Yeah. And instead of, and they so that tells me in this world that it's okay for ducks and dogs to copulate. Is that am I am I following the logic? Yes, there? you are. Okay, all right. Um, Just so, want that to be known that somewhere in this world there is probably a a poodle uh, duck uh, hybrid. That has been born. Yeah, it's called a duck gold platypus. Ah, thank you. There you go. <laughs> Insert rim shot. <laughs> uh, we only have two more members left of the Zucker here. We have Timmy Joe Terrapin. Timmy Joe Terrapin. Who is goes by Fastback. Sure. He is from the Okie Dokie Swamp <laughs> in the American South. <laughs> he was trying to catch a bus. Some of this I just have to write as is when yeah. I found it because yeah. you can't write it any better. He is trying to catch a bus to Kansas City. Kansas City. And was I struck come. by a meteor and gained the ability of super speed. Sure. So he's their flash. So a turtle equivalent. that's really fast. Um, I had to love Good the, thinking, guys. I, I liked this note that I found I had to add it to. Timmy Joe was not the first fast moving turtle in his family. His uncle, Merton McSnurtle. God was bless sec- you. Was secretly the terrific What's It, mm-hmm. a superhero during the Second Weird War. Not the World War, the Weird War. It's because their world, par- like it mirrors ours. Sure. But instead of World War, it, it was it Weird mir- World. It mirrors and, ours, but in a really dumb way. They fought the Ratsies. Ah. The, the Allies the fought the <laughs> Ratsies. <laughs> I like this now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden so, it took a turn. It was so bad. It got good. Yeah. So in the second weird war, the animals <laughs> fought the Ratsies. Uh, uh, our last, our last member here is good old Chester cheese. Yeah. And his name is little cheese. Is what he goes by. <laughs> he's a mouse and a student. He's, he's the one that got really the kind of the short end of the stick. He did. Uh, literally. I'm Chester cheese. What are you going to call me? Ah, just a little cheese. A little cheese. Okay. Well, it's because Damn it. the power he got is that he can basically shrink his size 
from being comparable to his teammate size all the mm-hmm. way down to just like a few centimeters. Oh, wow. So he's like Adam or Ant-Man. Yeah, that's Ant-Man, the kind of basically. guy he is. He did not get his powers from uh, the <laughs> meteor. Sure. Why would he? Yeah, no, he gained his powers from eating a piece of experimental cheese brought back from uh, Earth sees moon. Sure. Because sure. the moon is made out of cheese, cheese in this world. Experimental cheese. That's my. That's the title of this episode, Experimental, Experimental cheese. cheese. So that is Captain Carrot and his zoo crew of basically what all you can expect from them. They had, during the run, like a big baddie in each yeah. issue that they fought. Okay. And so it was just very just... You know, all yeah, right, this issue, we're going to fight this guy. Next issue, we're going to fight this guy. Sometimes it lasts a couple issues. But, I mean, my great villains, like uh, Cold Turkey, mm-hmm, who was a mm-hmm. turkey with weather control and a cold ray device. Sure. Um, there was also <laughs> Frogzilla. He also he also was really trying to quit he was smoking. Just, yeah. <laughs> cold Turkey? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fiends like Arma, Armadillo. Not Armadillo. Or, Armadillo. Armadillo. And uh, Feline Faust, just to name feline a few. Feline Faust. Fantastic. Now, that's what ran through the 80s is this team here. Frogzilla, is it just a giant frog? Yes. Okay. Some of them aren't. Good job. Like, there's a owl who, uh, he's a professor who, like, uses, like, scientific gadgets against them. His name's Dr. Hoot. So, it's all stuff like that. <laughs> Dr. Hoot. Dr. Hoot. So just looking <laughs> through the names of villains for these were great. Dear God, it's but Dr. Hoot. That was the run Woo-hoo. for the 80s there. Yeah. Um, they did and have. It's just them fighting big bad guys big or whatever. Bad guys. And that was it. There's Superman other, never shows back up. No. There's yeah. like they throw in other appearances from like older uh, DC uh, like animal characters, like okay. Mar- I can't remember. Horse Marvel? Guy. No, it's like Marvel Ma- Bunny or something. There's there's a bunny back in the 40s huh. that they made. Who I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. Yeah. But he was basically like an animal version of their Captain Marvel, who is now Shazam right. in DC. But he was from the 40s, so he yeah, had blackface it, or whatever. Well, no, is no, it? no, not yet. <laughs> Come on, this is DC. We're not talking oh, about. Okay, I'm sorry. We're not talking about Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, <laughs> but so like they had these characters that they had back in the past. They would use them to show up in as sure. well, right? And kind of, I guess, pay homage to the past. Um, <laughs> homage to a very stupid, very past. stupid yeah. past. Okay. Those those six issues that they never released that they ended up yeah. releasing as double the double issues there in the eighties was called like the Ozland Wars, but there was never a war. Like it was projected to be between like their world and like the city of Oz kind of thing. Uh-huh. But none of that happened. Huh. So like the title of the book has no nothing to do with what actually nope. happens. They couldn't get the rights to Oz. I guess was, maybe yeah. not. Or no, I think one of the writers came back and said, well, after thinking about it, the people of Oz wouldn't want to fight. And sure. so they're, plus they're all short. That's true. And I mean, It'd be hard to beat up animals if you're like, oh, what a cute bunny. And then he punches you in the face. I don't see these as being cute when they began. Like, I think they're, they're, they're sentient. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, not animorphs, but what are they? They're, they're, you well, know, walking, talking rabbits and stuff. I just, animal more. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't like the, the idea of them being normalized like that either. Well, get ready, Mike, because after 1983, uh, huh. They sat on the shelf for a while. Okay. And then somebody decided to pull them back out and put them as a two. Why wouldn't they? And two issues of Teen Titans back in 2005 and 2006. And Mike, and now that I've given you the cutesy story, let me tell you about how the new one went out. <laughs> and this new story is told. It's kind of a fun way to do it. They tell the, the story of the zoo crew through like excerpts of a comic book being written or being written. How about being read? Don't know what that was. By Kid Devil. Who Kid is, Devil. Who is part of the Teen Titans. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know who Kid Devil was. He was a newer member, like, Pardon obviously me. in the 2000s. Pardon but. me, comic book world. I didn't know who <laughs> Kid Devil was. Uh, but he's reading this comic throughout, so they give you, like, updates on their story. So it's story. like Inception kind of thing. So let me just tell you about the zoo crew here. Yeah. The zoo crew is shown to have mostly disbanded and now lives in a darker world than their prior adventures. Sure. So basically why I included the explanation of this, Mike, is it's because if your boy Zack Snyder got a hold of the zoo crew and this is the movie he would make. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Little Cheese is dead. Yankee Poodle has lost. How'd he die? 
He was murdered. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Yankee Poodle has lost her secret identity and is a fugitive from the law, accused of trying to assassinate President Mallard <laughs> Fillmore. <laughs> Fastback has disappeared. Uh-huh. Pig Iron and Rubber Duck operate as underground superheroes against the current anti-heroes uh, law. And Captain Carrot is in self-imposed retirement after the death of his partner, <laughs> Carrie Carrot, at the hands of Armadillo and Frogzilla. He has not left his apartment in years and drinks heavily out of guilt <laughs> over Carrie's death. That's great. The only zoo crew member prospering is Alley Cat, who has revealed her identi- uh, identity publicly and become a world famous magician. So it's the Watchman. <laughs> yeah, that, yes, pretty much. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So that's exactly why Zack Snyder would do it because he's wow. already done the Watchman. Hey, Zach, I know I've said a lot of bad things about you, but get on this, would you? Stop making all those uh, zombie. God, that zombie movie. It's terrible. like Watchmen meet Space Jam. Yeah, and yeah. I would Ooh, actually that is watch a good, that. That's a good uh, uh, description. Yeah, it'll Watchmen be a seven-hour movie, but I would take three hours of Captain Carrot just drinking himself to death. <laughs> I just, <love> that. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just as a live stream of Captain it's, Carrot well, just getting drunk. It's also very much like, and they said that it was. It, it's kind of they wrote it like this to make fun of like the late '80s and '90s of comic books where it got kind of. I got to put this in before I forget it. Jack Rabbit Daniels is probably what he's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I let you get that one in there. Because I definitely could not think of any uh, rabbit themed spirits. So I wanted to include that there's still actually uh, Captain Carrot was in something as recently as this year. Um, so like the characters are still used randomly, but obviously the whole thing is not. The wheels have fallen match. off. At the this zoo point, crew yeah. has been is been gone for the most part. I mean, this whole story. It's brought up again later on. I would love to see a new zoo crew, but but like a recap of how they disbanded. You know how all these awful well, things happened. I didn't get. I just wanted to include that because I thought it was a great way to if yeah. Zack Snyder did it. Yeah. But like actually in the story, they've continued from there, and like Alley Cat is the one who killed Little Cheese. Oh, and sent a uh, fastback into the future because he knew about her <laughs> attempted suicide or a uh, uh, attempted assassination attempt on the president. Yeah, yeah. Like it was just, wow. but then it turns out that it wasn't really Ali Catabra. It was a dark evil alien taking her cause uh, here we go. It's comics. You gotta have aliens. You gotta make everything just as convoluted as possible. Aliens portals, multiple timelines, but that's the zoo crew. Um, I thought it would be a fun little bit of ridiculousness. It was. It was great. Uh, Cosmic Carrots. Another thing that is interesting about Captain Carrot, at least later on, is his powers don't stay. He has to eat the carrot to replenish oh, it. Oh, really? So he he's the only one of the group. These meteor carrots. Yep. Uh, cosmic carrots. How do you keep? How do you keep growing them? He has a grow up apparently. Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. It's like you got to watch the sunlight. Sure, you know. Sure, got to yeah. make sure it's in a place. There's a bunch of Home Depot buckets. Y- yep. in his yep. basement. You got to have some fans blowing on it. Make sure that the neighbors don't call because it smells right. like cosmic carrots around here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so things like that. Uh, <laughs> My kids got caught with cosmic carrots one time. <laughs> it was not a great weekend. Well, you know, I, I think we're at a point in our time in our world here where we should just ease up on cosmic carrots. Like, I agree. There's I, a lot of other I say things. Legalize cosmic carrots. That's right. Well, I mean, Rodney, Roger Rodney Rabbit would enjoy it. Roger Roger. Rabbit. So, Captain Carrot and his zoo crew, part of. I mean, they come from the earth. They do. Oh, another. They're thing, natural. Another thing I didn't talk about. They do have some run-ins with some humans in the yep. uh, original run. With the, have you ever heard of the Inferior Five? No, we will do a book on Let's the. Let's do that. We will do an episode on the Inferior Five I love here soon. The fact that the Inferior is in their word. And they're in their basically name. That's great. they're like kids of superheroes. Okay, but they're awful. Uh, that's like the that. premise of it. That's a good so premise. I have that, honestly. and that's like there's one. I remember there's one. Uh, what's her? Name? It's like baby doll or just some kind of doll. Baby doll. She's sure. just ditzy, and she's just she's a model, but she's super strong. But she's an idiot. So she's there mm. just to be pretty kind of stuff. Like, it's things like this. We will definitely have the inferior five here soon. But let me just tell you, looking at this picture that you sent me, the one thing. That it's a cool looking picture. It, it is kind of a cool looking picture. But the one thing that sticks out to me is that the duck looks just like Daffy Duck. Daffy I mean, or Donald? Daffy. More. When you when you really start looking at it, that's more of a Daffy face. You're right. It is. You know? The bill looks more yeah. Daffy-ish. It's definitely a Daffy Duck with, with a bunch of extra feathers thrown on it. True. It says here that Roger Rodney Rabbit keeps two super carrots holstered on him at all times. There you go. So that's how 
he just keeps them with him, like oh, because I, I know that. like it lasts like twenty four hours or something like that, yeah. or he can overexert himself, and Don't so that's why he has to keep them. Hours, exactly. what, what's to keep somebody else from getting these carrots and eating them? Um, it's his grow up is hidden. Oh. Well, they're, in this picture, he, he they're throws, literally on his sides. You see he that? throws, yeah, he throws a blanket over it. I don't know, <laughs> or maybe they don't understand that he gets his powers from his carrots. carrots sure, he's fighting animals, Mike. Well, like, that's true. I have a Chihuahua who I love to death, but she might be the stupidest dog ever. I love. So I don't expect. Oh, there's Z the building. Yeah, the building, and it's in, very Teen Titans esque. Instead Titan, of a T, it's a Z. Yeah, it's a giant Z with a bunch of windows. Yeah, that's great. Well, this was fantastic, Zach. Thanks so much. I I do feel like I'm going to ask for some of this time back on my deathbed, but still, I thought it was great to learn. Oh, well, one thing I will throw in there, too, yeah. to close this out on the zoo crew. Yeah. They are part of a robot chicken bit as well. Oh, really? They oh, well, are. that makes sense. Sure. So, uh, I'll explain the bit, and it's funny when you go see it, is Superman has invited Green Lantern and Batman to Captain Carrot's funeral. Mm. And he thanks them he for showing up. Captain Carrot dies. Sure. Green Lantern doesn't know about the characters at all. Okay. So they go and they start walking by him. And the fact that they're comic, like they're cartoon animals, uh-huh. keep causing him to laugh. Like okay. he can't keep a straight face. That's fantastic. And it like shows like Pig Iron and Yankee Poodle. And uh, all, very sad. all of them are the Paul Bears. Oh, and nice. they're walking by and they're crying. And Green Lantern is just dying laughing. <laughs> and he can't hold it anymore. So he leaves. Uh-huh. Like he's like, I can't, I can't. And he flies away. Yeah. Uh, little uh, uh, the mouse, Chester Cheese, comes mm-hmm. over to Superman. And little he cheese. goes, Yeah. And he goes, Your friend was very rude to <laughs> Superman. And Superman goes, I'm so sorry, little cheese. And then Batman loses it. And that's how the scene ends. That's fantastic. Yeah, so, yeah. I love that. So you that's can go great. even find a robot chicken reference to uh, Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew. That is today's episode. It was a great one, man. Yeah. Good job. I just am always so impressed with the, well, the amount of uh, research you do. Well, I appreciate it. You are, uh, and I even gave very, you very good at these things. I even uh, got you to maybe read "Who Censored Roger Rabbit." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, if it's an audio book, I'll definitely read it. Oh, I don't know who read it. Hey, but. again, today we're uh, sponsored by Testacuzzi uh, for the nuts. Um, Testacuzzi, I just want to give you a warning: we're coming after you. That's true. Like we we need that Testacuzzi money. A test. We, I'm not going to stop until we are the official podcast yeah. of the test. I agree. I think that's a great, Hey, did We're you still this? not brave enough to like turn it on, plug it in and put no. our nuts in it? No, 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 no. We do like it. Yeah. Did, have either one of you noticed? It's very stylish looking. Have either one of you noticed there's two little holes at the bottom of this thing? Yeah. For the air. Oh, okay. I mean, that's what I would assume. I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's the ball bubbling output. Yeah. The, ball the, bubbling the output. bubbles pop out of there. It's like the, the jets and a. Yeah. Even though there it's is a glorified aquarium uh, aerator. Yeah, it is. It, that's basically all it is. Yeah, it's an aerator. But for right now, we will. But it holds my phone perfectly. Oh, it's great. Well, a little it, off to the side a bit. But still, if, it, interesting enough, it, it lilts off to the left a bit. But um, is never. <laughs> uh, too bad there's not a squirrel superhero. That's true. Isn't there? And uh, well, there's squirrel, squirrel girl, squirrel girl. But I mean, as part of the zoo crew, thing, though, yeah. as part of the zoo crew, there's not like some, you know, uh, Sammy Squirrel who is like, you know, right? I don't know, nutrageous or something like He's that. He's nutrageous. I don't know what his name would be, <laughs> but he love would that. love a testacuzzi. All right, so Zach, there we tell, go. Tell everybody where they can find us. And- you can find us on Instagram, uh, Bro Faux Hero on Insta. Feel free to email us at Bros Foes and Heroes at Gmail dot com. Uh, tons of great stuff out there. Tons more coming your way. So I think that if anything, it's a blast for Mike and I and uh, to do this. It's been fun. And I I feel like, you know, people enjoy listening to it as well. And we have nothing but more hilarity like this to come. Yeah. I I promise in one of the next episodes coming up soon too, I'm going to do, I have some stored away that I just find like super interesting Yeah, and we'll do some of those too. But just, I mean, the ones like this are the most. Oh no, these are great. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember seeing these when I was a kid, but uh, I never, never read any of them. 
It would have so, been after you went and saw the Doc Savage movie. Yeah, it would have been after Doc Savage. You got it right. Yeah. So right after the Roaring Twenties. There we go. That was episode seven. Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew. Want to thank you guys for tuning in as always. Absolutely. And uh, make sure to stay safe. And until next time, don't eat, any eat cosmic, cosmic carrots. carrots. There we yeah, go. Yeah, that's good. Got a gun. Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. 